Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on restrict network access using firewall-cmd slash firewall. So a lot of this we have covered in uh, previous videos so I'm not going to go over um, old ground. However I will um, just cover uh, a couple of additional things. So uh, the first thing I want to cover is how to enable um, IP forwarding or essentially routing on the network on the system. So I'll enable that for IPv4. So I'll also talk around the uh, firewall config, uh, a SCUI. So it's, a, it's actually a, a nice um, GUI you can use. And in some cases, people may find that easier to use than the um, firewall hyphen CMD command line. So what we'll do first is enable the uh, IP forwarding. So this essentially allows your system to be act like a router, so we can do things like masquerading. So um, to so if you're not aware of what masquerading is, um, that allows you to have um, a single IP address that provides access for multiple uh, particular network, for example. So a good example of masquerading in networks is you may have a public IP. So in your home, for example, the ISP will give you uh, a public IP and then your router at the edge of your network will actually um, masquerade the entirety of your local network. So your, all your machines on your, system, on your uh, home network will have a 192 address of some sort um, and this will then be masqueraded to your public IP when you go to Google or whatever website you visit. So they won't see your 192 address, they will just see your public IP address and all the uh, communication will be to your public address, to and from your public IP address. And all the router, all the router will do is use the uh, public IP address to communicate to that server. Then, wherever the communication is established, then it just forwards the packets down to the particular server, that the uh, particular computer that's actually doing the request. So it's just it will just do the forwarding. So it's exactly what we're going to be configuring is IP forwarding to do the pretty much the same thing. So it's VI etc sysctl.conf. So the sysctl is uh, an actual um, command a set where we can actually um, apply rules around uh, the, the kernel parameters. So we can apply quite a lot of um, different things in here. So the first thing, the only thing we really need to be interested in this time is just the enabling the IP forwarding. And we we'll create a new line with O and then just net dot ipv4 dot ip underscore forward equals one so it one equals one equals <laughs> on essentially uh, to enable that so just equals one and then do a right quit and then that will enable it on reboot but to, to enable it right now to do sysctl minus p and you can see it's reread that and then finally we can do a sysctl minus a to get all the kernel parameters and then we can do a grep for um, let's do ip underscore forward and we should see the forward equals one so that's the ip forwarding enabled so the next thing i wanted to go through is um, so we've got the firewall hyphen cmd which we used um, heavily in a previous video which i'll put the link to in the description below if you haven't already uh, seen that one um, i think what we'll do is discuss the firewall config so that's a, um, a GUI based interface so let's uh, install that so firewall config and just let that install shouldn't take very long okay so that's installed so then we just go to activities type in firewall and that will come up and you'll have to sudo of course because it's it's a system level privilege let's just bring this big okay so uh, if you haven't already reviewed the webs uh, my previous video it's probably a good time to do that now um, because I'll just I won't go over the old ground I will just review what we've previously configured and just go through some additional things that uh, are slightly easier to do in the uh, uh, config in this particular GUI. 
So as previous, we had the uh, the various zones we mentioned, and we have the server zone that we created. So that's that server zone there. We can see um, in here we've got we're in a currently the um, runtime configuration. So that's the active configuration, and then we've got the permanent configuration is what will run if we reboot. So it's always best to to, uh, to configure most stuff in the runtime. Um, config so you configure HTTP uh, allow, allow HTTP or block in a particular IP address make sure it all works good and if it all works then we can save that as the permanent configuration however if there's an issue then we know we just need to reboot the server or reload the firewall for it to clear that configuration so it's quite a nice way to ensure we're not having uh, major issues with firewall because obviously it's a uh, so it's blocking something so can cause some uh, issues with availability of the system. So, um, so while we're in the runtime configuration, let's have a quick look at a uh, service. Uh, perhaps we want to enable. Uh, let's do HTTPS. Let's try and find that list. HTTPS. Okay. So we literally just tick the box in here. That's immediately changed. Made the change. So it's in the runtime configuration now. However, if we do a reload of the firewall, or for example, a reboot, reload that, give it a couple of seconds, and we've gone back to the top of the list. And if we look at that now, uh, HTTPS is now gone. So as I mentioned, you've got tick the box, and then say runtime to permanent to make that permanent change. Then if we do a reload of the firewall, we can see it's actually stayed now. Okay. So services and services are pretty simple. We can see there's HTTPS there. We can actually go into the services section here at the very top where we've got zone service IP set. And we can actually look at the definition of a particular service here. So HTTPS, yeah, port 443, it's known, it's TCP. Uh, there shouldn't be anything for protocols, source ports, module destinations, because it's in the most cases is not uh, a custom uh, service we just got a standard service so it's port 443 in and tcp that's about all okay so we've enabled that for a particular service group we can have additional ports so if it doesn't match a particular service we could have some custom ports in here so a good example is some services use um, 8443 rather than 443 for uh, https and we can enable that and we've obviously got some different protocol options, but in this case, TCP is the option we want. Um, you can add additional protocols. We don't really need to cover this in this video. Source port, you can set the additional port source port if you wanted to. Um, in most cases, this may not be a particular set port, so it's very unlikely um, that's going to be set. But if you're doing uh, file rules outbound, then the source port will uh, you can potentially set masquerading I mentioned earlier so it sets your uh, you need the IPv4 forwarding as we enabled and to enable that just tick the box and that will start doing the masquerading and then we use the port forwarding to actually enable the rules for the masquerading so we've got the different protocols here so TCP and UDP are the common ones to be honest um, so for example we've got a web server we're hosting on this server itself uh, sorry we've got web server on the network somewhere and we're providing the actual um, masqueraded interface or the NATID interface that the um, server uh, external clients will connect to so they'll connect to a normal 80, uh, port 80 we then forward it to another server so let's say 10.02.20 and that's going to port 8080 for example so the, that server 10.02.20 is actually listening for uh, connections on 8080 it's not listening for connections on port 80 itself so we'll be listening on port 80 to then forward it the traffic to this server uh, transparently and we have to put authentication for this one Oops. And that's enabled at port forwarding. ICMP is um, it's usually to communicate with uh, systems to do things like pings and stuff like that. 
um, is for like error messages, errors check in and stuff like that. Um, we can do like routing and stuff like that, but routing checks and stuff like that. But however, in most cases, uh, people just use it for echo reply and echo request. So you do a send a ping out, which is echo request, and then you get a ping back, which is echo reply. Um, it's in within the within your local network. It's okay to enable it um, to maybe do some troubleshooting. However, um, out for outside networks, it's probably not adv advisable to allow pings because it just allows them to build a network map, which is probably not a good thing. Rich rules we won't enable, but um, it allows you know obviously more rich rules. Literally, quite literally, interfaces we about CD interfaces we added in a previous video. So those are the two interfaces that have been added. Obviously, we can just add interfaces here. And we can just put the interface name in there. Uh, sources, we can add a particular source address. So this is where the traffic is coming from um, to our net, uh, into our firewall. And obviously, we can say um, if it's our local, say it's our, our local network, uh, say slash 24, for example, then we're going to allow this, it's going to enable this rule. However, if it's in a completely different uh, network, then this rule wouldn't apply and they would have to go to a different rule, perhaps. In in that case, uh, a particular port's blocked, for example. So I've made all these changes. What do I need to remember to do? I need to actually make it into the permanent rules. So runtime to permanent, and we are active, active, active. Um, so one thing we can now cover is services themselves and obviously we've got all these different services definitions i mentioned we can actually change the services definition if we want to we can go into the permanent configuration because this is a permanent config and now we've got the additional uh, addition option so we can add our own services or we can edit a, a service that's already there so we can just click edit and give us some new names if you want to add additional ports that sort of thing that's if you want to go do that sort of thing and then i ip sets so this is just to um, create blacklists or uh, less likely uh, whitelists for ip addresses port numbers or mac addresses so uh, a whitelist to be honest in a firewall is probably not the best thing to do especially for uh, an IP address or a particular port, MAC address maybe, um, but a lot of these things can be spoofed um, by hackers, so you essentially open yourself up for um, that sort of thing. Um, so you may a blacklist is quite a common thing to have, so maybe there's known um, known hacker IP addresses or known bad or malicious IP addresses. We can add those in here in a blacklist. And then they will be continuously blocked. So we can add a blacklist here, um, particular IP, hash IP, which uh, IP address. And you can add that in there. But So we can add an IP address, IP set if you wanted to. Uh, it's not really part of the um, exam, but it's there if you want to uh, review that. So we can see in left here the co different connections. So we've got the uh, connections themselves. So there's the interfaces. Oh, we've got connections because we've got um, we're using uh, NMCLI. We used previously the Network Manager CLI. So we added those to the zones themselves. But we could do it an interface to a zone if you wanted to as well. So we've got the actual connection to the zone. We can actually change the zones of particular connections using this. So we can select a particular connection and then change the zone here. Pretty easy. One thing I would recommend is changing the log denied. So that's just um, any login for um, any rules that have been blocked. So we can select a um, multicast, broadcast, unicast. To be honest, I would block all denied. Um, you should just have make sure you have room to log all these messages. Click OK. And again, because it's a change, you have to make it permanent. Um, we did change the default zone previously to the servers, but obviously you can select the default zone here. And I've just made that permanent. 
And finally, uh, what I want to mention is the panic mode. So panic mode is um, if we have some kind of active um, hacking going on or something bad going on, we can use that to quickly block everything on the firewall. And that will just immediately action and block everything. Please note if you're connected by SSH or um, by something like VNC or something like that, you'll immediately get blocked. <laughs> So make sure you're connected to the console of the server. So if it's VMware, connect to the VMware console of that server. Or if it's physical, obviously at physically at the server. Yeah, and that's that would make all those changes. So we can then go back into the CLI and do Alt Tab to switch back, and we can use the uh, firewall CMD to uh, check our work. So firewall hyphen CMD. We can. Get get default zone. We can see the server zone is the default zone. We can we can get the active zones. You can see the uh, interfaces that are signed. Okay. List all and then Ivan Ivan zone and then the zone name. And we can see all the rules we've created um, during the video. So uh, we've got IP, ICMP, we haven't enabled anything there. We've got the interfaces assigned, there's particular sources, the services, the HTTPS and HTTP, uh, HTTPS and SSH. We've got the ports manually created, protocols, we haven't enabled anything, we've enabled masquerading. We've got the port forwarding, so port 80 going to, via TCP to port 8080 to that address. Any source ports haven't been enabled, and then ICMP blocks, and any rituals. That is pretty much it. Um, next thing to really just mention is we've got man pages for all of these. So we've got man pages for firewall CMD there. We've got info for firewall CMD. And we have a man page for firewall config, which is the uh, GUI configuration tool. And they've actually got some additional C infos there. And we've got an info for firewall config as well. And obviously, got nice. There's a nice home page to uh, look at some more information. As always, I put my uh, Kofi page on here. Um, so yeah, if you if you've got any inclination, please uh, drop a donation. That'd be awesome. Uh, then I've got my T Public um, for any T-shirts or anything like that. If you're interested in anything like that, uh, my Discord page for any questions. Um, Starting to get a bit more active, which is fantastic. Um, as always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, that would be much appreciated. Um, I'm trying to reach the uh, 1k goal. We, we're nearly there, so um, please help out where you can. Um, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again.